I've been a huge fan of the Ace Attorney game series for nearly half my life? Well, that can't be right. Hang on. No. Okay, what, what year is it? What year is- WHAT YEAR IS- I've been a huge fan of the Ace Attorney game series for... a long time, since the early days of the fandom. And for the longest time, there was nothing that I wanted more than to see Ace Attorney, my favourite game series, finally get adapted into an anime. In 2016, I finally got my wish. And the lesson that I learned that day was, be careful what you wish for. The reception to the Ace Attorney anime was, to say the least, not a positive one. The best this is ever really regarded by much of anybody is as a good anime but a weak adaptation, but honestly I can't even see calling this a good anime one way or another. The second season was a significant improvement, but then it was adapting what is, in my opinion, at least a better game, and even with the improvements it was just too little too late. Some of the reasons that the Ace Attorney anime failed are obvious. The poor animation quality goes without saying, and the pacing is abysmal. There's also the weird addition of filler content, which is a bizarre move for a series that cut as much content as it did. But ultimately, I don't think it's any of these reasons that are exactly what made this adaptation fail so badly. I think it's something a bit more subtle than that. Something that all too often goes unappreciated in regards to just how much weight it pulls in the Ace Attorney games. The Inner Monologue a huge amount of the writing in the Ace Attorney games is made up of the protagonists in a monologue, but in the anime, this is mostly absent. While we do get some cuts to Phoenix's inner monologue now and then, it's paired back massively from how frequent this is in the games. This also contributes to what has largely just been perceived as excessively fast pacing, although there is a very real pacing issue in this show, and the inner monologue certainly isn't the only factor in it by any stretch. I first began to notice this consciously during the Mia Fey episodes of the second season. These two cases, Ten About Memories and Ten About Beginnings, are both among the better cases of the series in my opinion. In no small part thanks to Mia herself. It's uh, very insane just how little of anyone's bullshit she's having, of which there is a lot, and she delivers so many fantastic lines, and she's just so fun to play as. But when it comes to the anime adaptation, she comes off pretty much exactly the same way as Phoenix. The only real difference is that she's visibly lovesick for Diego Armando, which they just try and cram down your throat as hard as they can because subtlety is for cowards! Of course, being that Mia is Phoenix's mentor and all, it does make sense that the two would act similarly in court, but given how brief Mia's time in the protagonist seat is, this puts a laser focus on just how much characterization is lost in the process of omitting the inner monologue. Even before Mia made this obvious, I'd observed that the Phoenix of the anime was not quite the same character as the Phoenix of the games. While I do think that this partially owes to the miscasting of Yuki Kaji as Phoenix, uh, I'm not disparaging him as a voice actor by the way, he's definitely a good actor but he's really miscast here. Although in the dub Eric Vale is probably the definitive English Phoenix voice in my opinion. Uh, also this has nothing to do with the rest of the video but while I'm on the subject of the voice cast, I love the anime version of Maya, uh, she is probably one of my favourite parts of the anime adaptation and a huge part of that is down to the fact that she's being played by Yuki Aoi who is the ultimate life form. Anyway, moving on, the Phoenix of the games and the Phoenix of the anime feel like two distinctly different characters, and I think this is mostly because of how much of his characterization is done through his inner monologue. The Phoenix of the anime comes off as a fairly milquetoast generic anime protagonist, whereas the Phoenix of the games comes off as a manic disaster chaos man. <laughs> Look at this, this is an actual thought that went through Phoenix's head at one point. This is something that's made very apparent in Turn About Revolution, which is the fifth case of the sixth and most recent game in the main series, Spirit of Justice. In this case, we play as Apollo Justice in a civil trial, which results in us facing off against Phoenix Wright, who is the plaintiff in this case. One of the most commonly remarked upon elements of this trial is just how incredibly different it feels to face against Phoenix as opposed to playing as him. Impressively though, despite this being the case, he's still totally consistent with how he is portrayed in cases where he's the player character, and noticeably so. However, when you remove all the internal panic and the frantic last second decision making and the bullshit bluffing, all of which we only see in Phoenix's inner monologue, the character we see feels totally different. 
it's no surprise that Phoenix is regarded as such a legal legend in universe when you realize that this is how everyone except the audience has been seeing him the entire time. It's much easier to be intimidated by him when you don't hear him thinking things like this. Which, by the way, takes on a very different meaning with the revelation that Sherlock Holmes was an actual real-life person in the Ace Attorney universe, and that he was a catastrophic dumbass. Now, while all of this obviously has an effect on the characterization of Phoenix and Mia, the issue that this causes goes much deeper into the mechanics of how good murder mystery storytelling works. Enthusiasts of the murder mystery genre may be familiar with Ronald Knox and S.S. Van Dyne, two early 20th century writers of detective fiction, each of whom penned a list of guidelines to abide by when writing detective fiction, uh, Knox's Decalogue and Van Dyne's Commandments respectively. Now, of course, these rules are not gospel, and some of them have aged less than gracefully, but these are still mostly a solid set of guidelines that shouldn't be broken without good reason, or at least a thorough understanding of why breaking them might be a bad idea. Ace Attorney has done this successfully before. In fact, I'd say the entire Fae channeling technique is the perfect version of Nox's second, but when we examine some of these rules, it should clarify why Phoenix's diminished inner monologue affects the mechanics of the story. In particular, I want to highlight Knox's eighth, the detective must not light on any clues which are not instantly produced for the inspection of the reader. Van Dyne's first, the reader must have equal opportunity with the detective for solving the mystery. All clues must be plainly stated and described. And Van Dyne's fifteenth, the truth of the problem must at all times be apparent, provided the reader is shrewd enough to see it, etc, etc. Now, in the games, whenever we're introduced to a piece of evidence, we generally get to not only see Phoenix's reaction to this evidence, clearly establishing the details of the evidence and its significance, but it is also then added to the court record, where we can then freely examine it at any time. Now, in adapting this to a non-interactive medium, we lose this access to the court record, which makes it even more important that we're given a clear understanding of the evidence, either through dialogue or through monologue, and yet the anime gives us even less of this than the games, sometimes revealing the evidence and immediately revealing a contradiction within it without giving us any opportunity to make this deduction ourselves. So the clues are not produced for the inspection of the viewer, we do not have equal opportunity to solve the mystery, and there is no way for the truth to be apparent to us until after it is fully revealed. When we're given no opportunity to understand the situation as it is initially presented, there's no room for surprise when this situation gets flipped turned upside down. The less that we think we know, the less it matters when our thinking gets turned about. And when we aren't as grounded in what is happening, we don't get to feel that desperate struggle against all odds. We don't get that incredible catharsis of finally revealing the truth. And this is a feeling that's so fundamental to the appeal of what makes Ace Attorney so good, and in lacking it, the anime adaptation just feels... gutted. If you haven't experienced Ace Attorney before and you want to get into it, please don't watch the series before you've played the games, if at all. It's so much lesser of an experience than playing the games is, and I can really only recommend watching it at all as supplemental material after having played the games. And even then, if you do want to check out an adaptation of this, I'd sooner recommend the live-action movie. It's certainly not any replacement for the games either, but then it's not really trying to be. It's very much its own experience, and is a very unique take on the story with its own upsides. All that being said, I am still hoping that we're getting another season of the anime anyway, because, uh... God damn if we don't need more Gavin content, and it looks like the only way we're going to be getting that is anime original filler, because Capcom are fucking cowards! So that was why I believe the Ace Attorney anime doesn't work. I'm hoping to bring you some more Ace Attorney content soon, uh, both the same kind of stuff I was already putting out, as well as commentary videos, and some general commentary videos on other subjects as well. I've not stopped making my old kind of content or anything, but expect this channel to be a lot more active in general. Um, hopefully the different content isn't going to put anybody who's already subscribed off, but then I've been inactive for so long I think most of you are just ghost subscribers anyway. So anyway, for those of you who are actual people, I've been Lind, and I'll see you all soon. Bye bye